Muscle spindles, okay? Throughout the belly of the muscles, they're in parallel. So here are the muscle fibers with these muscle fibers. That's why when I stick a needle in here, I'm not only going to go through regular muscle fibers, but sometimes I'm going to go right through a spindle. So sometimes I'll go directly through a spindle. And if I go directly through a spindle, then what's going to happen? I'm going to affect that spindle. Do you think it'll take much to destroy this spindle? No. If I wipe out a spindle, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it's probably not a great thing, but I mean, it happens. Spindles are a lot of connective tissue, though, and luckily we can rebuild portions of them, and the chances of you just getting the neural portion are pretty slim. These muscle spindles send afferent information about the length and rate and change of length. So in other words, they're the volume controls like we talked about before. They're concentrated in the anti-gravity extensor muscles. So guess where we're going to want to stick a lot of needles? On extensor surfaces of the body. Think about some of your most effective acupuncture points where they are. They're on extensor surfaces. There's a few exceptions, but most of them are there. Okay? Think about the importance of shoe points or hawato points in the, uh, in the back. Huge. Huge. Okay. So, muscle spindles would just zip along through this real quick because they need to do a tape change here. Okay? Maybe they're palpable, maybe they're influential. They're built around 3 to 12 individual fibers. It's really not important that they're contractile, but we have bags and chains. One senses motion, one senses regular activities. They're going to be stimulated by stretch. Okay, and I talked about bags and chains, so we really don't need to go into too much detail here. Oh, these are the bags, and this arrow is going to show us to the chains. And I've arranged to um, have IVs brought in at lunchtime so we can work directly through lunch. We don't actually... The, actually, the, the act of eating is very important because we get all this mastication, carefully you spell that, mastication activity that's occurring in our jaw muscles where I have lots of proprioceptors. So it's really important cortically for us to eat. So you need to chew your food. Remember your mom told you 32 times, right? That's what my mom used to say. So muscle stretch reflexes. We have this afferent arc coming in through the 1A afferent, efferent arc coming back out through the um, alpha motor neuron. This is just a little diagram that kind of shows that out. Let me make sure I turn this on. I did? Good. So where is the spindle concentration highest? We looked about this, but it's largely in the suboccipital muscles. Okay? We have this suboccipital triangle here, beautiful, beautiful. Rectus capitis posterior major, here it's been pulled away, we've got the minor. Inferior oblique, oblicus capitis lateralis. It's just this whole area, and look, bladder 10. Here it is, greater occipital nerve point. Coming right underneath that, in the lateral branch of that, and actually the posterior primary division of three, is gallbladder 20, right over next to it. Lots and lots of mechanoreceptors. These upper four cervical neuromeres feed directly into the floccular nodular lobe of the cerebellum, your balance and coordination center. And that's important because not only does it drive your extensor muscles, but it drives your eye muscles. And Dr. Carrick has gone through this entire rehabilitation program now, looking at eye movements and being able to figure out cortical pathology based on people's abilities to have saccadic movement in different planes. Way, way cool stuff. Way, way cool stuff.